Now available from Upstart Company, Gamera 3D, The Goodman Cut. It's the classic, original Gamera, but with a funky, retro-dimensional kick. No special equipment needed, a love for giant monster mayhem in 3D, mandatory. The signed, limited edition DVD is available at spacebrains3d.etsy.com. That's spacebrains3d.etsy.com. Hour of the Wolf, air date, May 9th, 2013, Iron Man 3, take one. Hey, I'm Dan Persons, your old friend from cfqonline.com. Why haven't you written? So, we are talking about Iron Man 3 here, and I'll say it, the Iron Man franchise is possibly the snarkiest superhero franchise around. It was born that way, it's genetically coded into the DNA of star Robert Downey Jr. and director John Favreau, who did the first two films. This one, the directing and writing has been taken over by Shane Black, who's no stranger to ironic genre himself, having done stuff like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which also starred Robert Downey Jr. on the plus side, and Last Action Hero on the not-so-plus side. But to be fair, he only wrote that film, so there may have been slips past his control. Let's hope so. Here, though, with Iron Man 3, he hits the mark and does it quite nicely. The plot itself is at once very simple and completely chaotic. There's a terrorist staging bombing attacks on U.S. citizens. He's called the Mandarin, and he's played by Ben Kingsley with a Bin Laden beard and, weirdly, an accent that oscillates between Baptist Preacher and Hugo Weaving as Agent Smith in The Matrix. He is a classic Iron Man villain. I can't attest to that myself. I'm a DC guy. But that we've got him is, of course, not enough. Into that are thrown a couple of maybe good, maybe evil scientists played by Guy Pierce and Rebecca Hall. There's a political conspiracy, a whole lot of kidnappings, and just for fun, a taciturn little boy played by Ty Simpkins, just to give Tony Stark, Iron Man's alter ego, someone to lovingly snipe at. With all of that, there's hardly enough room for Robert Downey Jr. to do his thing as Iron Man, or Don Cheadle to back him up as War Machine, here pointedly redubbed Iron Patriot by the government. But that's really the point. You know, you go to see a Superman film to see Superman, you go to a Batman film to see Batman, although somebody should have told Chris Nolan that with the last film, but you go to an Iron Man film to see Tony Stark, the man inside the armor, and as portrayed by Downey, possibly the most lovable genius billionaire industrialist jerk ever. Now, the preceding film, Iron Man 2, wasn't particularly successful in finding the balance between letting Downey do his thing and serving up the superhero stuff that the people are paying their money for. But Shane Black does much better here. He's found ways of maintaining Downey's presence in the film, even when the special effects kick in, including retooling the Iron Man suit to a kind of easy-in, easy-out mechanism that allows Stark to pop out at will, and also having the suit assemble on Stark piece by piece, frequently stopping the process halfway, all the better to keep the actor on screen longer. More, as is Shane Black's won't, he sculpted this third installment as an ironic subversion of the whole superhero form, most specifically Chris Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, and most, most specifically, the actual Dark Knight film itself. On top of Stark's ongoing crisis of confidence as a superhero, not helped by events he experienced in The Avengers, he really is Bruce Wayne's flip side. Iron Man 3 calls into question what audiences seek from the whole superhero-supervillain dynamic and sneaks in some pointed observations about the whole notion of a war on terror to boot. It's not deep think stuff. Nolan is still more daring in that regard. But it does bring some bite to the comic book action, and it is appreciated. Comic book purists have been grumbling over the treatment of the Mandarin here. I can't go into detail about that because it is a major plot point. But for me, Iron Man 3 was fun, funny, action-packed, occasionally managed to touch on a genuine human emotion, and still boasts all the big-budget candy that may yet signal the end of Western civilization, as we know it. But hopefully that's not going to happen anytime soon, because I did like this film. A lot. 
Thank you for listening. If you want to write me, send that email to hotwolfreviews at upstartcompany.com. And remember, if you love science fiction, fantasy, enchantment, and the imagination, listen to Jim Freund's Hour of the Wolf most every Monday at 9 p.m. ET on WBAI 99.5 FM in New York and streaming on WBAI.org or through TuneIn. The Hour of the Wolf Reviews is produced by me, Dan Persons, recorded at the studios of Upstart Company, and is an Hour of the Wolf production. Take care.